Hello Year 10, this is a video in relation to Remote Learning Task 7. I will be telling you the story of how Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933, which will allow you to answer our overall lesson question, how did Hitler become Chancellor? Hindenburg's term of office as President ended in 1932. By this time, he was 84 and increasingly frail. But he was persuaded to stand for election again to keep the government as stable as possible. Germany had been plunged into the depths of depression after the Wall Street crash in 1929. Campaigning was bitter and often violent. And when the election took place in March 1932, the results did not bring the stability they had hoped for. Now, as you can see, no candidate received 50% of the vote. So therefore, the election was repeated in April 1932. Hitler campaigned furiously. He rented an aeroplane and flew from town to town delivering speeches. His essay paraded in support of the Nazis and they disrupted communist rallies. Political opponents also fought in the streets. Hindenburg was re-elected, but the results were a serious blow to the communists and a boost to Hitler. Hindenburg's re-election did not bring the stability that they had hoped for, yet again. In April 1932, the moderate Chancellor Heinrich Brüning took two steps which lost him all hope of majority support in the Reichstag. That's Heinrich Brüning, the Chancellor. First of all, he banned the SA and the SS because there was a genuine fear that there, a civil war would break out on the streets of Germany. He wanted to calm unrest and control the Nazis. Secondly, as a result of the Great Depression, he announced a plan to buy up land from large landowners to help house the unemployed. These two moves united the right-wing groups against Brüning. The ban on the SA and SS enraged Hitler, as you can see. The landowning classes were also furious about the plan to buy up their land. One land member of the landowning classes was particularly annoyed, and that was President Hindenburg. Hindenburg, a landowning conservative, was furious. So in two steps, Chancellor Heinrich Brüning has managed to lose the support of Hindenburg, the majority of the Reichstag, which has left him no choice but to resign on the 30th of May 1932 because he was unable to govern. Next into the story is Kurt von Schleicher. Now, for some time, this ambitious and high-ranking army general had been suggesting a new chancellor to Hindenburg. He had been organising a coalition of right-wing supporters. So that's a group of right-wing supporters. And these, this group consisted of landowners, industrialists and army officers. And he proposed that the wealthy gentleman politician, ex-general Franz von Papen, should act as the figurehead for this new coalition. They did not have a majority in the Reichstag. The moderate Social Democrats were the majority there. But von Schleicher persuaded Hindenburg that if the Nazis, with their huge popular appeal, would support this coalition, then it could govern without the Reichstag. And then they could just use presidential decrees. That's laws. This was completely against the spirit of the Weimar Republic. The constitution intended that the Chancellor should have the support of the majority of the Reichstag, the Parliament. In fact, it was so undemocratic that the new government was known as the Cabinet of Barons. Nevertheless, Hitler agreed to support the coalition if the ban on the SA was removed. Schleicher's coalition took power. Now, May 1932, Brüning has resigned. Hindenburg listens to the advice of von Schleicher and allows von Papen to become Chancellor. Now, von Schleicher assumes that they can control the Nazis and he says they are merely children who need to be led by the hand. But Hitler and the Nazi party were for the first time part of the government of Germany. Now, von Papen's new government was in trouble from the start. 
In July 1932, there were campaigns for the Reichstag. Once again, campaigning in June and July caused violence in the streets, mainly between the armed private armies of the Nazi Party and the Communist Party. In all, about 100 people were killed and over 7,000 injured. In one clash near Hamburg, 19 people were killed. When the results were announced, the Nazi Party had won 230 seats. The Nazi party was now the largest party in the Reichstag. Hitler demanded that Hindenburg sack von Papen and appoint him as Chancellor because he had the biggest majority in the Reichstag. Now, November 1932. Hindenburg, a field marshal of the German forces during the First World War, despised Hitler. In Hindenburg's eyes, Hitler was just a vulgar, jumped-up corporal. Therefore, he refused to make Hitler Chancellor. Instead, von Papen hung on to office and called new Reichstag elections in November 1932. Now, they did this because they were gambling that the Nazi support would fall, so then they'd have less seats. Now, Nazi seats did fall to 196, but they were still the largest party. So von Papen's gamble was lost. At this point, von Schleicher abandoned von Papen. He told Hindenburg that if von Papen stayed, the country would descend into civil war and the German army would be unable to keep control. Reluctantly, Hindenburg told his friend to resign. Hindenburg was by now struggling to find a strong government, but he still refused to make Hitler Chancellor. Von Schleicher told Hindenburg that the November election results showed support for the Nazis was fading. He told a visiting Austrian minister that Herr Hitler was no longer a problem. His movement is a thing of the past. In desperation, on the 2nd of December 1932, Hindenburg appointed von Schleicher as Chancellor. Von Schleicher's chancellorship had no real political support. With Hitler and the Nazis now against him, von Schleicher was unable to govern. He had no majority in the Reichstag and no support amongst the public. In the face of this, von Schleicher asked Hindenburg to suspend the constitution and just make him head of a military dictatorship. He said that the German army would support him with armed force. But Hindenburg refused. Now, rumours began to circulate about Schleicher's plan for an army coup. On the 30th of January, von Papen returns. Von Papen told Hindenburg, if a new government is not formed by 11 o'clock, the army will march and a military dictatorship under Schleicher looms. Von Papen also gave Hindenburg a solution. Make Hitler the Chancellor, von Papen the Vice-Chancellor, and obviously Hindenburg the president, and then they could make all the decisions themselves and merely use Hitler as the figurehead. Von Papen said that he had Hitler in his pocket and within two months he would have pushed Hitler so far into a corner that he would squeak like a mouse. The ageing president finally agreed, and as a result, on the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was legally appointed the Chancellor of the Weimar Republic.